hello guys welcome to solving solutions on brand channel where i get solutions to all your solving problems it's nine seven in class again today how have you been on today's tutorial we are going to look at a question on geometric geodesy where we want to convert geodetic coordinates towards space rectangle like equivalent right so the geodetic coordinates are in latitude longitude and height and then the space rectangular coordinates or the cartesian are in what xyz right good so for the latitude we have 40 degrees for the longitude we have um, 60 degrees and then for our age we have 500 meters so also we are given the semi-major axis to be this we are given our eccentricity to be this right good then if we look at the formula to get our xyz it contains n right good which is what the radius of curvature of the prime vertical or the prime vertical radius of curvature so we have all the parameters needed to get our xyz except what the n inside of the formula right good so for you to calculate n it is also given that our n is equal to a which is the semi major axis divided by the square root of 1 minus eccentricity squared sine square what theta in this case the theta is what the phi right good so that will now help you um, get the value of n which we are going to substitute into x y and z right good so um the solution is that you need to note generally if maybe you were not given your eccentricity you need to note generally that your eccentricity is what your the square root of a squared minus b squared all over a right good and now for you to get b you would use this relationship which is what f over a minus b all over a so if you are not giving your eccentricity and then you are only giving your um, semi-major axis and the flattening you can use this relationship of f to get your b and then from there you can now proceed with this other one to get your eccentricity which you can now use alongside your n to solve all of these problems right good so since we are given our um, eccentricity it's as though this set of formula are redundant however it is for your general note now from the question we have what n to be this where we have a which is what your semi-major axis as it is given divided by the square root of what e squared your e is what your eccentricity squared multiplied by sine square what theta or sine square phi which in this case is what 40 degrees right good so for you to work on this very easily let's um, bring out the calculator and then when you are working on geodesy or maybe when you're carrying out any geodetic calculation it's always easier or it's always better rather to leave your calculator to a very good number of accuracy even if it's up to 15 or 10 or 9 right good so this is in three decimal places so we need to change it from the three decimal places to let's leave it at normal for now or instead of normal let me take it to nine decimal place so that we don't have um, some significant values so we still take it to fix and then let me leave it on nine right good so um our e which is this right good so we need to save the value of a and e on the calculator so we have um so the reason why i want us to save it is that it will be easier for you to recall these values when you have saved it than typing it at every point when you need them right good so shift this and then a right good so if we do alpha a equal to the value of what the semi major axis is out then if we still come up we have our eccentricity that needs to be saved Good. so similarly we can store this on what on the letter e right good so if we recall alpha e we have that value stored right good so this will now make it easier for us to just recall them so first of the operation is for what the calculation of the the radius of curvature of what the prime vertical so we have them um, we have a divided by the square root of one minus e squared sine square what phi right good so in this case we have to start it this way for it to be easier for everybody so you can go with sine 40 degrees sine square 40 so when they say sine square 40 you just go sine 40 when you have your answer 
you now square that answer so that is simply what sine square 40 degrees so when they say sine square 60 you do sine 60 and then you square it not sine maybe you find the um, the sine of 60 squared no you do sine 60 and then you square it right good just like sine 60 times sine 60 right good so we have um, the first one to be sine 40 we have our answer and then we squared it so we got this right good so we have um, completed sine square 40 now we can decide to multiply this by eccentricity squared right good remember that we are coming this way because if you are going with board mass you have to do subtraction last right good so that's why we are carrying out all the multiplication operations right good so and then as we are carrying out all the multiplication operations you know you look at the values because in multiplication a times b is equal to b times a so the other does not really matter right good so um we have done sine square 40 now we have our eccentricity squared remember we have stored our eccentricity as e right good so we can easily recall it as what times alpha e squared and then we say equal to so if we do that we have what this value are we together we have splitted the process here e squared gave us this and then sine square 40 gave us this right good so when you now do e squared times sine square 40 you would have this value which is this last value that we have here so finally we can now do one minus the last answer we got right so if we hit equal to we now have um, 0 0.9972403 right good so that's not the end for the denominator the denominator also has what a square root right good so finally we now do square root of what answer equal to so that will now give us what the final part of our denominator but for us to get n it is what a divided by everything we have been doing in the denominator so we now say alpha a which we have stored earlier divided by the last answer we got that will now give us the value of what n are we together so this is how you can simply go through the process of calculating n right good which is the radius of curvature of what the prime vertical right good so when you have gotten this um, value of n you can now substitute into your x y and z to get what the x y z values of what your latitude longitude and height are we together so if you missed it at any point you can always pause and then rewind so since we have gotten x it now implies that we are going to substitute so substituting into this formula of x we now have our n which is this we can decide to store our n as what as c so we have our a to be a we have our e to be e and then we now have our n to be what to be c so always remember that we have stored the value of n which is this radius as what as c on our calculator here so that it will be easier for us to to always recall right good so we now have what this um, substitution to do so it will simply be if we want to take it once and for all but always remember to break it down this is just um, a direct multiplication so there is no um complex tax in this one the only part is what this um, bracket so you can just decide to open this bracket and then you have um, alpha c plus our h is giving us what 500 right good so we have um, alpha c plus 500 we close that bracket right good so that's the only complex part then the next thing is what you multiply it by ensure you close this bracket and then you multiply it by so you see the value of x is out so when you're doing it for maybe assessment as an assignment or a test or exam whatever the case is ensure you state out all of the steps as you can see on the screen right good so we are just running through the multiplication or the calculation generally that's why we have just put everything on the calculator but you can see the step you have n plus h multiplied by cos lambda cos phi so you have the sum here multiplied by the values of cos 40 
and then the value of what cost 60 which is 0.5 right good so you now add everything together you have what 244 um, 6545.311 meters so that is the value of x that is what the x coordinate right good when you come to y you do similar stuff in this case we are only changing um this um trigonometric function to sign right so if i delete this and then i will include sign there right good because every other thing in the formula is the same then if i say equal to it should be able to return what the value of y but always remember to what to show working as the case may be so they say there's a little bit of a multiple brackets but it's still very simple so how do you go about that? It's always easier to do it this way so that you don't um, fall into any problem. Now we have um, the bigger bracket outside and then we have the smaller bracket inside. So it's always better to what to operate on the smaller bracket before you get to the bigger bracket and then you now go outside. So that's the other. So if we are operating on the smaller bracket, we have what our N to be this. Remember that our N is stored as C, right? Good. So we have our N to be this into 1 minus e squared our e is this value squared we close that plus what 500 which is our h then we close the bigger bracket times sine 40 right good so if we come down we still have our n our n has not changed so we now have 1 minus e squared remember that we have our e somewhere here to be this so if we do e squared we have what this value which is the same value that you have seen here plus 500 times sine 40 right good so if we now still come down a bit you can see that for the inner bracket we have done the square of eccentricity now we want to subtract that one from one right good we want to subtract that square from one so it will now be one minus the last answer right good as you can see on the screen we have this value so we are done with the operation of what that inner bracket so since we are done with the operation of that inner bracket we are now going to multiply because there is an order in board mass so we are now going to multiply this result we have gotten with the next operator which is what multiplication right good because addition and subtraction are always at the tail of the order so we have what the next operator to be what multiplication so we now multiply whatever we have got in here with our n right good so this value times alpha c remember that c was used to store n in our um, process here so you have what you have um six three four four two one nine point three two one then you have what 320 just um, 0 0.001 right good so that is for your n into 1 minus e squared then the next part of it we are still inside of this bracket is to add what 500 right good because that is the plus h so you have plus 500 so when you do that you have um 6344219.321 plus 500 so it will now give you 6344719.321 right good so you can now move on to multiplying it by sine 40 so you now see multiplied by sine 40 right so that should now give you what the value of z so you see the process it's very very simple but you just need to understand how to maybe especially the um the part that contains squared especially in this part that contains squared in what the prime vertical radius of m curvature right good so you need to know that square is just multiply it by itself or you get the value and then you square it then coming up to the z um, calculation you have two brackets so you operate on the inner bracket when you are done you go to the next stage which is what multiplication so you multiply the result you got with what n after which you now add it to h so when you are done you are done with all the brackets you now multiply the sum by what by sine 40 degrees right good so when you are done with that it gives you what your z value so these are the equivalent um the cartesian equivalent right good space rectangular coordinate equivalent of our um, latitude longitude and height so we have them to be this 
Generally, your geodetic coordinates refer to coordinate system used to define locations on the Earth's curved surfaces. That's why the units are in what in degrees, right? Good. Unlike the Cartesian that we have it in meters. So they are fundamental part of geodesy describing points based on the Earth's shape and size as defined by a specific reference ellipsoid. Then for the rectangular coordinate system, also known as a Cartesian, is a two-dimensional system for locating points on a plane using two perpendicular axes. In this case, it's what X and Y. And if there's any vertical protrusion, that's what that's the Z, right? Good. So um you should know that X, Y, Z is not the same thing as Easting, Northern and Height. Maybe subsequently we are going to get to that point. So generally we have shown you how to convert um, your geodetic coordinates to your space rectangular equivalent. So we are going to see you on the subsequent tutorial. Ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time. Bye.